Okay, good morning and welcome uh, to a new week. Uh, before we begin, would someone open us in prayer, please? I can pray, sister? Yes, please. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day and thank you for the breath of life, my master, Lord. As we come today, gather to learn your word, my master. Let your word be transformed in our spirit, my master, that we may be rooted uh, strong in strong in your foundation, my master, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will inspire our teacher to teach us your word, my master. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So um, we'll just continue from where we uh, stopped last week. We'll do a quick overview of what we covered last week and then go into uh, the rest of it. And then... Uh, we're going to try and finish the book today, uh, and then uh, we'll have a discussion on uh, what your experience was of meditating on the word. Uh, I'd asked you all to pick a topic and uh, spend time over this week meditating on that word. So um, we'll have a discussion on that maybe in the second hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll just continue uh, we'll just do a quick overview so um the previous week we'd looked at what exactly we do when we are meditating uh, and we'd uh talked about these three aspects of meditation which is uh contemplation visualization and confession uh right so uh, we looked at what the those three things mean and then we went into what uh what are we expecting out of meditating on God's word? Uh, so we said the first thing is to actually come into the presence of God, to uh, be able to experience him with us in that time of meditating uh, and spending time in his word. Uh, we also talked about uh, us being renewed in our minds, uh, renewing the way we speak, renewing our faith uh, through meditation. So uh, it changes the way we view ourselves, it changes the way we view the world around us and the way we respond to the world around us. Uh, the fruit of meditation, uh, we looked at a few verses in scripture um, and some of the things that result out of meditating in God's word. So uh, being born of the word of God, uh, uh, experiencing healing, uh, receiving insight and wisdom, uh, prosperity, being promised prosperity and success, and then spiritual growth and maturity. Um, we then uh, looked at when we can meditate on God's word so we can uh, use it as a daily practice as we are studying the word of God to also be meditating on God's word uh, in times of special need where we're having a certain situation or a challenge and uh, we go to God's word and meditate on a specific topic relevant to what is going on in our lives. Uh, and then the third is um, just to do it as a discipline um, that we strengthen ourselves spiritually, just as you would uh, using physical exercise to strengthen your body. You do that as a discipline. Uh, and uh, that's what keeps you strong and healthy in the same way we do that with the scriptures, with meditating on God's word. And then we covered a few ways in which we can meditate on God's word. These are just uh, suggestions uh, that you can uh, choose to use or you can find other ways in which you want to meditate. Uh, so one is to meditate on a specific topic. So uh, 
verses related to that topic to spend uh, a few days or weeks uh, or months meditating on one topic related to your specific season in life. Uh, another way is uh, to have a, a weekly routine where each day you're meditating on a different topic uh, and then you go back to the same topic every week. Um, so there's an example given there on this slide. Uh, and then the third was contemplative Bible reading. So where you uh, basically just focus on a few verses uh, rather than reading a whole passage or a whole chapter of uh, scripture. You just take a few verses and uh, meditate, like think deeply on those verses uh, and either spend one day on that or spend a few days uh, as you feel led and as God is speaking to you through those uh, through that time of meditation. Uh, we then uh, looked at uh, how we protect and nurture the seed that has been planted. So uh, we talked about Satan being after the word of God, right? And so uh, Satan doesn't want us to hear God's word, to receive uh, God's word. And uh, because he knows that that will result in us growing in our faith. And then it makes his efforts to, uh, to draw us away from God, to uh, draw us into temptation uh, that much harder when we are uh, resting in God's word, when we are believing God's word, when we are declaring God's word. And so before that word can actually settle in our hearts and take root in our hearts uh, satan's goal is to uh, keep us from even hearing the word or believing that word uh, or receiving it for ourselves uh, so uh, he does this in various ways uh, either through just keeping us from hearing the word because we're so busy because we're uh, distracted by other things that are happening in our lives uh, or he um, takes it away by bringing in confusion, bringing in lies um, or deception related to the word of God, or he uh, uh, brings in doubt uh, or unbelief so that we uh, don't actually believe the word that we have heard. Uh, so these are some things we need to protect ourselves against. And the way uh, to do that is to continually meditate on God's word, uh, to walk in the spirit and in fellowship with other strong believers. Uh, three ways that we can keep ourselves uh, from losing uh, the fruit of the seed that is being planted in our hearts through the word of God. Um, we looked at this uh, other parable um, from Mark 4, 26 to 29, uh, just about knowing that once a seed is planted, it will grow, but that takes time. And we don't know how it will grow, but we know that it will grow. We just have to be faithful to do the task of uh, taking care of it, of protecting it, of nurturing it, of uh, strengthening ourselves in the word, and then uh, trusting that the harvest will come um, based on all that we've looked at in the beginning of this book, right? We began the book uh, looking at uh, how powerful the word of God is and how it can produce things uh, in our lives, how, can, how it can create things in our life, uh, how it can transform us. So taking all of that uh, into, uh, into consideration, we keep growing in the word, just trusting that that fruit will, uh, will be born over time. We don't know how and we don't know when. We are just going to be faithful to keep uh, remaining in God's word, abiding in God's word. Um, so I think this uh, that was the that was where we stopped last week, uh, and we'll continue from there uh, into the last few chapters of the book. Um, so we look at uh, revelation. So uh, receiving spiritual understanding. So we see three things uh, in uh, these three. Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, when they're talking about 
uh, this parable, they use three different ways of talking about what we must do in response to the word of God. And Matthew talks about understanding the word of God. So if somebody can read for us Matthew thir uh, 13, verse 19, Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, please. Matthew 13, 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Thank you. Uh, I'm just opening that up as well. So um, we see here that uh, specific uh, description that Matthew uses. He says, when you hear the message and don't understand it, uh, right? And um, we had talked about this previously, uh, where understanding doesn't mean only understanding with our minds. It means receiving a spiritual uh, understanding of that scripture. And that comes from the Holy Spirit, uh, right? So um, here, understanding, uh, if we look at the word that's used in scripture, it uh, can be also looked at as putting together or grasping or comprehending uh, what is being uh, taught to us. Um, now, that comprehension is uh, not just the meaning of the literal words, but comprehending what does that mean for me? Uh, how should it impact me? What is the spiritual truth underlying it? Um, and we look more at a few of these scriptures here and uh, look at what does it mean uh, to uh, get a spiritual understanding of the scriptures rather than just understanding it with our minds and with uh, our human efforts. Uh, let's also look at Luke 8, 12. If someone can read that, please. Luke 8, 12. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Thank you. So uh, in Luke, we see uh, talking about believing and being saved, right? So that hearing uh, or that uh, understanding really um, then uh, moves into believing and receiving and being saved by that word. Uh, and so uh, that's why Satan is trying to take it away, because he knows that once we receive that uh, understanding of the word, once we receive that spiritual revelation of the truth of God's word, uh, then it can take hold of our hearts and we can fully uh, take hold of it for ourselves. Uh, it moves from just a head knowledge to a conviction that is uh, so strong within us that no matter what is happening around us, uh, that conviction will not be affected, right? So uh, there's a difference um, between having knowledge and having uh, a firm grasp or having a conviction of something. Uh, and um, this is where we want to move from knowing the word of God to moving to uh, this firm faith and belief in God's word. Um, so we look at uh, some of these scriptures. Uh, we're talking about the difference between just understanding with our human intellect. So uh, we can we can study the Greek and Hebrew. We can uh, understand uh, the content. We can uh, dissect the verses and the passages and do an outline of the book or the uh, chapter that we're studying. We can do all of those things uh, and just come to an understanding of the message or the words that are being used. Uh, but to get to that uh, spiritual truth that underlies it, the, uh, the message that the Holy Spirit wanted to inspire us 
uh, through and inspired the writers to put down, uh, we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Uh, that is not something that we can do with our human intellect. Uh, so uh, for us to come to that place of recognizing we want to put in that effort, we want to spend time studying God's word, but we want to do it in, um, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, in dependence on the Holy Spirit, recognizing that our own efforts can only take us that far. And then uh, the Holy Spirit really has to be the one opening our eyes uh, to see things that are beyond our understanding. Uh, so we look at these verses, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, I think these two are uh, yeah, it's 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and 9 to 12. We look at 14 first, and then we look at 9 to 12. If someone can read that for us, 1 Corinthians 2.14. 1 Corinthians 2.14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Thank you. So uh, we see here clearly that uh, we need the Holy Spirit to reveal uh, reveal the truth of uh, things related to the spirit, things related to God, right? Uh, we cannot understand it in our natural minds. And so uh, for us to understand it, we go to the Holy Spirit. Can we then read uh, verses 9 to 12 of the same chapter, please? Yeah, First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person, which is in him. So also... No one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. Thank you. So uh, these verses are just so beautiful and such an uh, amazing promise. Um, we start with this in verse 9 that there um, were no, no human eye, no human ear, no human mind uh, can comprehend, can uh, even come close to understanding or uh, imagining what God uh, has in store for us. But we have this, and it ends in verse 12, we have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit enables us to understand these things. Um, so we know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Um, so this is uh, such a beautiful promise. So in line with our effort of meditating on God's word, uh, to know that God has already given us his Holy Spirit to give us, uh, to enable us to understand what we are uh, what we're looking at, not uh, to make us work hard and try to uh, come to some understanding uh, by our own efforts and striving, but uh, to do it in line with his spirit and to receive from him as he reveals things to us through his spirit. Uh, so uh, just uh, an encouragement for us to take those two things together, the word and the spirit, uh, and uh, to go to meditating on God's word in that way. Um, and then let's just read uh, Isaiah 55, 9. I'm, I'm sure all of us know this verse, but we'll just read it. 
uh, why we even need to go to the Holy Spirit. We've already read that in 1 Corinthians 2, um, but we'll just read this as well for Isaiah 55, 9. For as, the high, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Yeah, thank you. So again, that reminder that uh, we cannot come in our own uh, in our own human efforts uh, to understand the things of God. Uh, we can't only depend on ourselves. Uh, it has to be uh, something that God. Uh, enables us to do, empowers us to do, uh, to understand uh, God's word. And uh, just uh, something that uh, I was reminded of as I was preparing uh, this is uh, when, when Jesus is preaching um, to the people, we uh, see him uh, talking about, let those who have uh, eyes to see, let them see, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Uh, that is uh, what we are saying here in this, that we come to God's word with ears and eyes and hearts that are open to receive from him. Uh, so uh, it's only when we come with that posture of, uh, complete dependence on him with the true earnest desire to know his truth uh, that we can receive this kind of revelation uh, that was hidden from so many other people right it was only revealed to the disciples and so for us uh, as Jesus disciples uh, to come with that same uh, desire to know him more uh, to truly uh, seek him and find him through his word We read uh, this last verse in this chapter, Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Thank you so much. So, um, uh, this is also just a promise for us uh, that once that word uh, takes hold of us, and once we take hold of that word, uh, it's impossible for Satan to then uh, snatch it away, like we read in these parables, right? Till till it's just something that's in our head, till it's just some outside knowledge that we have. Uh, if we have not taken hold of it for ourselves, he can easily bring in all of the things we talked about, distractions, doubts, unbelief, all of those things. But uh, once we have allowed it to really take root in our hearts, uh, it becomes that much harder for those things to take us away from God's word and uh, to uh, keep us from believing and receiving uh, what God has said in his word for ourselves. Um, so with that, we move into what are some of the opposition that comes to God's word? So we uh, looked at Satan bringing in, uh, Satan taking away the word of God. Uh, but the parables also talk about uh, some things that come in and choke the word of God, right? Uh, we read about the thorns that are there uh, in the soil that choke out the word of God. And so these parables talk about what those thorns are. Uh, we'll just read Matthew 13, 20 and 21, and Mark 4, 16 and 17. Uh, yeah, please, uh, anyone can read those verses for us. Matthew 13, verses 20 and 21. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. 
For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Thank you. And Mark 4, 16 and 17, please, somebody. Mark 4, 16 and 17. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Thank you. So Matthew and Mark talk about tribulation or persecution or problems that are arising. Uh, and that's related specifically to the word that we've received. Right. So Mark says um, for believing God's word, that persecution comes because we believed God's word. Uh, and um, Matthew also says because of the word tribulation or persecution comes in. And let's just look at Luke. 8.13 as well. Luke 8.13. But the one but the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Thank you. So Luke talks about temptation or testing that comes in. Uh, and um that being something that keeps us from seeing that harvest uh, come forth. So um, these are things related usually to the word, the very word that we are uh, meditating on, the very word that uh, we have received. Uh, these things come against that word. Uh, now, when we're talking about tribulation, it, it can be any kind of hardship, any kind of problems that arise uh, in relation to the word, challenging that word. Uh, so for example, if we, um, if we are meditating on a certain passage on healing, uh, and then we experience sickness, uh, that experience of sickness can either take us away from that that verse, that word that we were meditating on, thinking, OK, maybe maybe I've misunderstood the word. Maybe that word is not for everyone. Maybe uh, that you know, was a promise that uh, is for a certain season, whatever it is. And then we give up on continuing to uh, claim that word and declare that word over our lives. Um, so that is one way in which we can fall away from the word of God and give up on the truth of God's word for ourselves. Uh, the other is persecution. So persecution is referring to uh, human opposition that comes in. So um, for example, if uh, for a new believer, someone who uh, is um, just starting to understand the things of God and starting to try and walk in obedience to it. And then uh, challenges come in from people who are around them, whether it is from family who are not believers or from friends who uh, make fun of you for doing something differently than you were doing before. Uh, those kinds of things can pressurize us into giving up on that, uh, on that word, uh, into uh, is say we Psalm one. So you do not uh, walk with those who are wicked. You do not uh, sit in the seat of scoffers. Uh, so if those are some changes that you are trying to uh, implement in your life, and then you have people coming in and uh, mocking you or challenging your faith, uh, it's. Uh, that is one way in which we can say, OK, maybe uh, maybe this is not true, or maybe this is not worth holding on to, and then we give up on it. Uh, and then the third way is uh, in temptation that Luke talks about. So uh, temptation, we all know, is a testing of uh, the very things that God is uh, asking us to do. And so uh, when we are, uh, we see even in Jesus's temptation, where uh, Satan is coming with a certain uh, word trying to draw Jesus away. Uh, but Jesus is holding on strong to the truth of God's word. He knows God's word and he uh, knows the truth of it. And so even though that temptation comes in, he relies on the word of God to strengthen him in that time of temptation. Uh, so uh, these are some ways in which 
uh, the word or the seed that is sown in us can get choked out and uh, we don't see the fruit of it born in our lives. Um, so how do we uh, protect against that is we let the word take deep root in us. Uh, so if it doesn't, like we read in these uh, three uh, gospels, um, it fell on shallow ground. The seed fell on shallow ground. That means there was no room for it to uh, deepen its roots, to strengthen itself, so that when the thorns grew, uh, it was strong enough to withstand that. Right. Uh, so here we need to allow the word to go really deep into us. Uh, we look at Hebrews 2 1. Just look at how can we do that. Hebrews 2 1. Someone can read that, please. We must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. So this is how we strengthen ourselves. Right? We listen carefully to what we have heard. That means we don't just hear it once and then, uh, then think that, OK, once is enough. I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. I'm going to uh, be strong in the word of God. That's not how we uh, make sure that we are protecting ourselves against uh, against these thorns that can come up. Uh, instead, we continue to listen intently to that word, uh, continue to dwell on that word, consider the truth of that word for our own lives, uh, continue to receive that truth uh, for the things that we are facing, the challenges that we are facing. So even in the midst of those challenges, continuing to go back to the word of God, uh, the things that we know the scriptures talk about in relation to the challenges that we are facing. Uh, but apart from doing it in that time of testing, in the challenges that we're facing, we need to be strengthening ourselves when things are good, when we don't have persecution, when we don't have problems, tribulations, we don't have temptation. Uh, at those times, we should be investing our energy and time into strengthening ourselves in the word in this way, listening carefully to the word so that we won't drift away from it. So that when the challenges arise, we are already so strong in the word that um, that those challenges just have no power over our lives, over our minds, over our hearts, uh, because the word of God is already so strong in us. So um, the uh, in these three passages that we looked at, uh, we looked at the thorns uh, the thorns of these uh, three things, right? That uh, of temptation, of tribulations, uh, of uh, persecution coming up. Um, we'll just read these three passages that I mentioned here: Matthew thirteen twenty-two. Someone can read that, Mark, and then someone read the uh, verses from Mark and then Luke. Matthew thirteen twenty-two. Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Thank you. So uh, before this, what we were reading about was the soil that was not deep, right? The soil itself was so shallow that the seed didn't take root. Uh, here we're reading about the thorns that choke out the word. Uh, so these are another set of things that can keep the seed from bearing fruit. Uh, so Ma Matthew 13, 22 uh, talks about... Um, the cares of this world, the worries of this life, the lure of wealth. Uh, so those things being the things uh, that take us away. Can somebody read Mark 4, 18 and 19, please? Now, these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and becomes unfruitful. Thank you. And Luke 8, 14. 
Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. So we see here all three talking about the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, uh, the desire for other things or the pleasures of this life. Uh, right. So these are uh, these things can be distractions to the word of God. Uh, so when we are too busy chasing after riches, uh, when uh, we have a greater desire for uh, things that satisfy the flesh rather than uh, things that enable us to grow in the spirit or uh, the cares of this world. So um, they may be very uh, relevant things, right? Responsibilities that we have uh, just as um, a person who belongs to a certain family. We have family responsibilities. We have work responsibilities. And all of those things can uh, be things that um, take up so much of our time that there's no time uh, given to the word of God. So those are ways in which uh, the word of God can be choked out or we don't have time to strengthen ourselves in the word of God. Uh, we'll just look at those three things. So the cares of this world, those responsibilities that we have, or the deceitfulness of riches. So uh, all very legitimate things. We all need money. We all need uh, finances. We need things. Uh, we need to be earning money, right? Um, but uh, we see more and more that um, the source of money, which is our work, uh, has become such a large part of our lives uh, that it takes away so much time from everything else. We don't have time uh, with God. We don't have time with family. We um, All of those important things get forgotten or sacrificed for the sake of surviving. Right, we we think that okay, we need the money to survive, so we have to make these sacrifices. Uh, so they can be very legitimate things, but what is the place that we are giving them in relation to our walk with God, in relation to uh, remaining in God's word and strengthening ourselves in God's word? And uh, the last is uh, pleasures of this life. Right, so uh, there are good things that we want. That's not wrong. It's not wrong to want things for ourselves, for our families. Uh, but if those things draw us away from God, then that's where uh, we have to be very, very careful uh, to make sure that we don't uh, give up on God's word, uh, give up on our first love, uh, on the one thing that is most important, which is uh, to hear God, to listen to God, to dwell in his presence. Um, so. Um, any things that y'all uh, want to talk about from your like practical lives of what do thorns do generally that we know of and how do we see that uh, in our lives as well so what do what do we see when when there are thorns what does that do to the plant it chokes the plant and destroys it it destroys it. So it, uh, what does it do? It's actually starting to take away nutrition from the plant, right? So it grows alongside the plant, and uh, it starts to take away nutrition. It starts to uh, grow larger than the plant itself, uh, taking away its sunlight, and it makes the plant weaker. It makes the plant that you're actually wanting to grow, it makes it weaker and um, malnourishes it. it, takes away all the nutrients that are actually uh, meant for the plant, right? Uh, and so how can these things uh, we talked about, uh, the cares of this world, uh, riches, all of those things, how can, how have you seen those things uh, be like a thorn? Maybe if not, even if not for you personally, how have you seen it in the lives of others or how do you, uh, perceive those things can take you away from God's word. I think what happens is when we, uh, uh, like you said, I mean, we all need money and 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 things, you know, and it's not wrong to uh, want 
you know, certain pleasures that, that of course align with, with what God wants for us, for our family and for us. But I think when we start getting fixated on, on certain things, like for example, money is one of the biggest sources of, could be one of the biggest sources of evil, where we fixate so much on making money and and then we we lose focus of uh, what the word is saying and money and everything that money brings with it becomes our main focus. And mm -hmm. that that's sort of over, over time, that greed, the desire for money increases and the our, it takes away our time, it takes away our, uh, everything that we, we you know uh, would like to do. And then we sort of, uh, the time for the word, the time for God diminishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just um, how it can slowly, it may start with very good uh, intentions on our part, uh, but it can slowly start to uh, take away from our time. So just like the thorns, right? They start to draw away the nutrition. They start to take from the good plant. And so that's what this can do. It may not happen immediately, but as we are sacrificing time, as we are giving up on the important things for the sake of these other things, uh, it can slowly uh, start to eat away um, at those good things and take away from those good things, take away the fruit that will be born through those good things. Uh, Lucy has also shared uh, our focus changes uh, and the importance that we're giving to God's word uh, the kingdom of God, all of that uh, is lost, right? So we're called to seek the kingdom of God first. Um, and then we know that all of our other needs will be satisfied. But if we go the other way around, we go after those needs, uh, forgetting the kingdom of God, uh, then uh, we are the ones who lose out in the end. Thank you. So uh, we'll just look at how we can guard ourselves against uh, thorns that choke the word. Uh, so we have a lot of pass, uh, a lot of verses here from Psalm 119, but we'll just read them. Uh, if someone can read these verses for us, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 16, I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Verse 36, incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. 37, turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. 47, and I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. 72, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. 97. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. 127. Therefore, I love your commands. Sorry. 127. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, than fine gold. 162. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. Thank you. Uh, so these verses um, have a good balance between how do you focus on God's word. So he says, keep your word before my eyes. I meditate on your word all the day long. Um, then it also talks about what uh, is my heart's desire, right? I love your word. I delight in your word. Uh, I uh, love it more than gold, more than riches, uh, all of those things. So. Uh, where is our heart first? Do we are we really delighting in God's word? Are we really loving uh, the truth that is in it and uh, holding on to it with that kind of passion? Uh, and so, has it taken hold of our hearts? Uh, are we doing the the practical things of keeping the word before our eyes, uh, meditating on it all the day long? All of those things uh, will guard against. Uh, guard against though the other things taking us away from God's word. If it has captured our hearts and uh, our, uh, our passion, our desire is for the word of God, and we are doing practical things of meditating on God's word, um, then um, 
then we will be strengthened in the word of God. And those other things cannot take us away from it. Uh, let's also look at Psalm 62.10. Someone can read that for us, please. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. So here again, um, it's uh, don't, don't let um, money take hold of your heart, right? Let the word of God have that place in your heart. Uh, and the beginning of verse 10 is interesting because it's saying, uh, it's talking about ways in which you're gaining wealth that are uh, clearly not the ways of God. So that itself proves, if, if you are gaining riches in that way, that itself is proof that, uh, your wealth or money has a greater place than God's will, right? So uh, so we can look at what are the ways in which we're living that show whether God is primarily uh, the one we are pursuing or it's wealth that we are pursuing. Uh, there, there will be fruit that uh, we can look at to see uh, which will prove uh, one way or the other. And then Matthew 6.33, if someone can read that for us, please. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Thank you. So um, we see here, and uh, Sister Lucy had also mentioned this, that everything else comes as a result of seeking God's kingdom first. So we can trust that God cares about those things. God cares about uh, the things we care about. So the cares of this world, whatever responsibilities we have, God cares about those things. God cares about uh, our finances. He cares about provision for us. He cares about um, just the the things that would make us happy, right? The pleasures of this life, uh, things that we enjoy when they are legitimate, uh, things that are in line with God's desires for us. Those things are pleasing to God himself, and he wants them for us uh, as well. But if we pursue those things versus his kingdom, uh, then we're losing out on... Uh, really recognizing that life is in God's kingdom. It's not in those things. Uh, but when we seek God's kingdom, God blesses us with those things, recognizing that those are also good things. Those are also blessings from God. Uh, so we should be concerned about what are some ways in which we can make sure we seek God's kingdom first. Uh, let's just end with that. What are some ways in which we can seek God's kingdom first? Practical things that we can do to make sure uh, that we are putting God's kingdom before all of these other things. Any thoughts? One I thought, think we must uh, prioritize. Sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, sorry, you can. Uh, yeah, one of you can go, and then the next, please. Sanjay, please go. Okay, just a short one. So, uh, one good thing I've noticed is it's good to be a part of Bible College. You know, because that's that's a place where we're we're definitely receiving the Word of God and engaging in it on a daily basis and. Uh, mm -hmm. discussing things so that's just one sh small thought that's that's all i wanted to share so it's it's a good thing we're all here and i'm happy to be here i'm i'm pretty much sure everyone else in bible college is so happy to be here it's such a blessing for all of us thank you thank you yeah being in bible college is very nice and so such a great blessing if you go out of the line of god's word and we don't be in discipline it brings us the guilty immediately into our hearts <laughs> just to like um yeah, bounce back yeah that, that's being strong in the word so anything that is not in line with god's word 
you immediately yes. know in your spirit, right? Yes, yes, it brings us in track uh, to confess and uh, just come back to God. Like, I'm happy. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, Praise God. Brother Warren, you were going to say something? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's also, uh, I agree with uh, what uh, Brother Sanjay and Sister Lucy were saying as well. You know, uh, being a part of the Bible College it just uh, brings about the discipline, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, the more we learn about uh, through all the various uh, uh, modules, you know, it just it becomes so interesting. There's so much to the Word of God and there's so much of revelation when we read. And, you know, uh, yeah, it's just brilliant. And I think that's something we need to focus on and make the, uh, you know, spending time with God and reading the Word of God a priority in our life. It has to come before everything else. And, yeah, personally speaking, like, it's not been my, the case with me, uh, but uh, there's something I strive to do. And I think the more we tr strive to do that, you can s actually see the, 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 the changes and, you know, the, the positive changes that God brings in our life. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, let's just take a 10 minute break and we'll come back and continue from here. Uh, and we'll have, if anyone else wants to share also, when we come back, you can do that. Uh, so we'll take a break now and come back. Thank you. <laughs> 